Hello, Paul here. Welcome to my channel, Talking Music. And today we're going to talk about George McRae and Rock Your Baby. And just the mere mention of the song's name makes you want to sort of get up and dance around your kitchen, doesn't it? It was the debut single for session musician George McRae. It was written by Casey and Finch who were to go on to form Casey and the Sunshine Band, who had enormous success, didn't they, in the States and in the UK with uh, their particular brand of disco music. George was going through the doldrums at the time he got this song. He'd been part of a duo with his wife Gwen, but Gwen had won a solo contract, so George's career was stalling. He'd been a session musician, he'd had some success along the way. One of his big successes, I suppose, was singing backing vocals on the Supremes, Someday we'll be together. But that was back in 1969. It was now 1974. He was 30 years of age, thinking of going back to college to retrain. And then this little beauty, this little gem, literally landed in his lap. Now, how it came to be that George McRae ended up singing Rock Your Baby? Well, there were various stories. See which one you think is the most credible. For sure... Casey and Finch had laid down the backing track in late 1973, and then they sat on it. They loved what they'd done. They'd used a drum machine, which was unusual for the time. And it was a drum machine that sort of created a sound which was to be replicated in dance tracks in the 1990s. So in that school, Rock Your Baby was very ahead of its time. But Harry Casey couldn't reach the top notes of this song. They'd recorded it in a certain range that didn't quite match his vocals. So they had given up the idea of them as Casey and the Sunshine Band singing the song. And what they were now looking for was an established name to sing their song. Harry Stone, who was the owner of TK Records, where the uh, song itself was recorded, suggested Gwen McRae might be a good choice to record the track. But he also suggested George McRae have a go at it first. And Gwen McRae herself said that when she heard the track, she knew it wasn't right for her, but absolutely perfect for her husband. And she begged Casey and Finch to try him out. That's her story. There's also another story that George happened to be in the studio that day and uh, was asked if he would give the demo a guide vocal so others could hear what the song could sound like. So there you have what, three ways in which the song uh, came to George McRae. I don't believe for a moment that Gwen McRae, being the uh, reputational artist she was, I mean, she was a professional singer, I don't believe that she would just not turn up for a session, so I discount that. But uh, with what she said about the song not being right for her, and with what Harry Stone, the owner of TK Records, had said in suggesting George McRae sing the song, and what with the song becoming the phenomenal worldwide success it eventually was, you know, success sometimes has many fathers, doesn't it? And it seems to me that everyone was trying to get in on the action by saying, it was my suggestion that George sing it in the first place, of course. But for sure, George got the call from Casey and Finch, to ask him to come on down to the studios to sing the song. Here's George in his own words. Rock Your Baby was recorded um, by Rick Finch and Harry Rain Casey, who became Capes in the Sunshine Band. But uh, Casey couldn't sing the song because it was, it was, the key was a little too high for him when he cut the track. And so I was lucky enough because of my high voice, and Rick remembered me singing uh, some other songs. I did a couple of CDs before when I first signed my contract with uh, Austin Production. And I hit my high voice and he remembered my high voice there. Then it said he had, when he cut it, cut the track, uh, Rock Your Baby, he said, that's a good vocal. That'd be George can sing this because he got the high voice. Case. So Rick came to me and asked me to sing, would I be interested in singing the track? And I told him, yes, let me hear it. And, and the rest is history. Yes, indeed. And the rest was history. He sang the lyrics from a piece of paper, as he hadn't had time to learn them. And the uh, song was sung in a male falsetto, which was quite popular at the time. And George was a natural falsetto. And after a few takes, Casey and Finch were beginning to realise they had a dilemma. 
they had hoped to get a more established name for their song, but uh, were thinking, hey, George's version is pretty compelling. And the more they listened to it, the more they liked it. Now, Casey and Finch had sat on the backing track for the first few months of 1974. They went to clubs in Miami on a regular basis and they started studying which songs made people want to get up and dance and which songs made them want to sit back down again. And Rock Your Baby was kind of born out of these studies, the gathering of this information. And they began to realise that there was a kind of sweet spot for people to want to get up and dance to musical tracks, anywhere between 98 and maybe 110, 112 beats per minute. And uh, Rock Your Baby, around 104 beats per minute, is right slap bang in the middle of this sweet spot. And after George McRae had laid down his vocals, they took tapes to various DJs in the Miami area and said, what do you think about this? Is this the sort of song you would play in your club? Uh, do you think people would dance to it? And they pretty much got a 100% positive response. The DJs were saying, look, you can't be absolutely certain about what will work and what won't work, but uh, we'd certainly give it a play, and we'd certainly be hopeful that it would go down pretty well. When it was released, it went to number one in America, two weeks, July 1974, and it went to number one in the UK three weeks, July and August of 1974. It's, it was a song that filled the summer that year. There was the sun shining, there were blue skies, and it seemed to be on the radio all the time. It really was the sound of summer uh, that year. Not only number one in the US and the UK, but also in Austria, Belgium, Canada, the Netherlands, Germany, Italy, Norway, Sweden and Switzerland. Here's a look at the UK singles chart. As you can see, Rock Your Baby, George McRae went to number one, 27th of July 1974. That was the top five. And uh, it really stands out, doesn't it? I mean, there was no other song in the chart that sounded like Rock Your Baby. It was completely different. It had real standout. And it was one of the reasons why it was such a success. Another reason, of course, it went down really well in the clubs. And it was radio friendly as well, so you just heard it everywhere you went. People absolutely love the song. And there are a number of musicians and commentators who say that this song was the very first disco song. Now, it's really difficult, I think, to say something like that with accuracy. To pinpoint one record and say, there it was, that's the start of the disco genre in the 1970s because it wouldn't have been the first it wasn't the first so-called disco song because the sound of disco had been coming through in 1974 you had the three degrees you had the hughes corporation these all preceded uh, uh, george mccray's rock your baby you had uh, mother father sister brother with the sound of philadelphia a song that went to number one on the American Billboard charts near the beginning of the year. And then came Rock Your Baby in the summer. Now, Rock Your Baby was certainly at the forefront of disco. It was uh, in the first wave of disco and probably gets highlighted as the first disco song because it was easily the biggest hit out of all of them so far. But uh, to introduce this new disco sound that went down so well in the clubs and attribute it to George McRae and Rock Your Baby, I think is a little unfair on some of the other artists. But for sure, after Rock Your Baby had been a hit, the charts began to fill up with more of this kind of sound. The likes of Carl Douglas and Casey and the Sunshine Band and the Fatback Band. And certainly by 1975, uh, disco uh, was established with these various artists. And indeed more George McRae as he followed up on his initial success. Some interesting tidbits on the song itself. Rolling Stone magazine voted it number one song, the number one song of 1974. And it received a Grammy nomination for Best Male Vocal. And uh, the guy who played the guitar on the song was uh, a session guitarist called Jerome Smith. And he was paid $15. $15 dollars to put the guitar down on this track and it was a song that really paved the way for others like Niall Rogers so uh, he was a kind of trailblazer but 15 dollars I mean it's not a lot of money now these days 
And back in 1973, when the track was first laid down, you can't make the case that it was a lot of money then either. So uh, someone got a good deal. And for sure, that someone was not Jerome Smith. But he was part of the project. I'm sure he's dined out on that story many times during the intervening years. The song uh, was the inspiration for John Lennon and ABBA. John Lennon's Whatever Gets You Through the Night uh, had similar chord progression. And ABBA, Dancing Queen, uh, Benny and Bjorn had said they wanted to write their own Euro version of George McRae's Rock Your Baby. And both of those songs went to number one in the USA. And George McRae, of course, calls it his bread and butter song. And with 11 million worldwide record sales, do you know what? I'm not surprised. So there you have it, one of the disco greats, George McRae and Rock Your Baby. Now, a little question for you before we finish. Disco established itself this year, 1974, and the word rock was, with disco, a euphemism for the word dance and dancing. And there were three US number ones with the word rock in the title this year, 1974. All disco tunes. Uh, the first was Rock the Boat, Youth Corporation, for a week in July of 1974. That was knocked off the top by uh, George's Rock Your Baby two weeks on top of the American charts in July of 74. And later on in the year, there was a third song with rock in the title and it went to number one for a week in October of 1974. What was that song and who sang it? Any ideas? Have a little think for a few seconds and I'll get back to you with the answer. Well, there he is. There's the guy, Andy Kim. He was a pretty established singer-songwriter at the time. And he wrote Rock Me Gently, which went on to be a very big hit, topped the charts in America, got to number two in the UK in October of 1974, and disco was getting very firmly established. Well, that's it for another Talking Music. Do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love that. And if you've liked what you've just watched, then please like. So until next time, when we'll have another Talking Music for you, uh, have a good time and I'll catch up with you soon. Till then, bye-bye.